am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. You know, it is my head. I, I, I really love it. I'll show you that. Yes, politically correct. Wow, this is amazing. There are women that love Trump. I'm telling you, you know, women do head. like me. I'm telling you. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Build that wall. Build that wall. His rise was baffling, dramatic, and to many, completely unexpected. Donald Trump won more votes than any other candidate in a Republican primary in U.S. history. Like we're babies. What the hell is going on? We're going to have the wall. We're building the wall. The American we're building the wall, folks. dream the wall. is dead. And some even though the media cover his every move, it can be difficult to understand how he got this far. On this episode of Fault Lines, we traveled a thousand miles across Donald Trump's America to meet some of his most fervent supporters. Get him the hell out of here. Get him out of here. Get out. And now your host for this Wednesday edition of What's Your Opinion, Jay Nunley and Mike Cornell. What we're asking is your opinion on uh, Donald Trump and why West Virginia is overwhelmingly in support of him. Why has West Virginia basically turned against the Democrat Party? How has we turned from a blue state into a red state? And there, we didn't even go through the purple stage that we, much. It, we? Went right through it. Now, the question I'm asking today is why you support Donald Trump if you do. Please call in right now. Logan County, West Virginia. If there's such a thing as a Donald Trump stronghold, this might be it. By some accounts, there's more support for him here than in any other state. If you will remember, just as little as 20 years ago, there were hardly any Republicans on the ballot in Logan County and Mingo County, ever. Uh, so if you won the Democrat primary, you were the winner of most offices. That is no longer true. Nathan and Whitman, you're on the air. Tell us what you think. Hey, guys. Um... Well, the reason Donald Trump's so popular in West Virginia, it's like telling a fat kid, we're going to give you lots of cake. <laughs> he's saying what every West Virginian wants to hear. Yeah. He he's going to put coal back to work. Now, granted, do I think he's going to do that? No, I don't. I think he's saying whatever it takes to get elected. Good morning, Alice. You're on the air. Tell us what you think. All of our families have had to leave home just to have a job, a decent job, to support their families to want to live a life, to have a home, and to be proud of who you are. Uh, and uh, so are you a supporter of Trump? Uh, to be honest, sir, I'm a Democrat. My daddy would roll over in his grave. <laughs> sure. Yes, sir, I am for Trump all the way. In West Virginia, more than 150,000 people went to the polls to vote for Donald Trump, even though he was the presumptive nominee by the time the state held its primary. He won 77% of the vote here. West Virginia is the classic uh, case. It's been shifting just here in the last few years. And it's shifting ironically as a result of hard times. This is a place where their economy really is falling apart. Unemployment is very high. Um, this is a place that has always been hard done by, but now it's getting worse. And as it gets worse, they go further and further to the right. Uh, over the last eight years or so, the people in Logan County and in the coal country, or the coal fields as we call them, uh, have been have become convinced, whether it's true or not, uh, that uh, President Obama, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Democrat Party, and that includes Hillary Clinton and even our own governor and senators, uh, have ruined their lives by way of the decimation of the coal industry. What they're feeling is that these people are the ruination of them, and therefore they're throwing all support that they have behind the exact opposite, and that would, in this case, would be Donald Trump. Uh, at one point in just Logan County, there were hundreds of active mines. Now there are four uh, major mines that are still in operation, only four. Uh, so you're talking about losing over half your population in, in a county over the course of 50 years. Logan County is in the southern part of the state, in the heart of Appalachia. It's an area that lives or dies based on the fortunes of the coal industry. Right now, coal is in a decline that few people think can ever be reversed. According to some estimates, the state lost 13,000 mining jobs in the last four years. 
Uh, this was once a flower shop and then it became a tanning salon and closed. The red building right here was once uh, a small locally owned mercantile grocery store, closed, gone, out of business and probably never coming back. This building here was once a great re uh, locally owned and, and fun restaurant, it's gone. In neighborhood after neighborhood, we found houses that are empty and falling apart. It's as if the families just picked up and left one day. How common is seeing something like this around the county? Uh, unfortunately, in this county and our surrounding area, hundreds, hundreds of them. There's a family living here. Uh, they had to leave because once jobs are gone, people have to be gone. Now it's a rusted out, burnt out shell of the American dream. In many ways, the Atkins are a typical family in Logan County. Kevin's mother and uncles worked in the coal mines. He's been a miner since he was 18. His wife, Selma, also comes from a coal mining family. A few months ago, Kevin's hours at work were reduced, and before that, his pay was cut. Every day, he lives in fear of being laid off again. How many times have you been laid off? Uh... One, two, three, four, five, about six times. Wow. Since 2008. Is that just because so many of the mines are closing down? Yeah. It was right before Christmas. It was December the 15th, I believe is when it was. I got laid off. That's a hard hit. Yeah. What's that like? It's tough. Why was that one particularly tough? It, it ain't that one, it's all of them. Is it because you, you want to support your family and they make it so hard, or what? Like, what's? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's the government. It's it's a heartbreaking. It's, Depressing. So do you and your, your wife, do you have to have a plan B? Kind of what happens? We just take it day to day. Really. I mean, she jokes around all the time and says, we're one payday from being homeless. How close to the truth is that? That ain't far off. And I'll tell you, I've just always been fascinated by the mines and the courage of the miners and the way the miners love what they do. They love what they do, you know? And Donald Trump talks about West Virginia and coal mining in almost every speech he gives, even those far outside the state. Kevin said everyone he knows supports Trump. Because our jobs are going to everyone else but us. You know, we're sending our jobs to Mexico. China's taking our jobs. Japan. Taking our jobs, Ross. That's all going to change very rapidly, I promise. That promise, or at least the illusion of hope that Donald Trump is offering, has been a major factor of his appeal to a part of America that often feels forgotten. And I just think you're amazing people. I don't think it's connected to any kind of solidarity with the working class of any color. The thing about him, is, as with any great demagogue, is that he tests propositions, you know, for, to see what, what the applause lines are. I just think you're amazing people. And he found that the more outrageous he was, the more people liked him because of this business of defiance of the elites, the technocratic elites anyway. And you watch what happens if I win. We're going to bring those miners back. You're going to be so proud of your president. You're going to be so proud of your country. Do you believe he can bring it back? Bring it back like it was? No, but he can stop it from getting any worse. If things haven't changed in four years, how will you feel? Probably the same as I do now. How's that? Aggravated and saddened and mad. The American dream. 
be anything and do anything you want to do. With the way the economy is now, I don't believe that anymore. I was always told growing up, if you're going to dream, dream big. Mm -hmm. Now you dream small. <laughs> Trisha Cunningham and I'm coming to you live from the Trump Team PA that's www.trumpteampa.com office and we're here in Monroeville and we have a special treat for Mr. Trump y'all know he's coming into town tomorrow so what we went and did here in the office is we got him this huge with a Y birthday card and as you can see it is almost filled up now we need you we are going to give this to Mr. Trump tomorrow at the rally. We want you to represent, you need to be out in that audience and you need to come in here today. We are identified as one of the 15 major states and you have to be here. You have to get involved with us today. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be huge. Come see Mr. Trump tomorrow. Come see us today. We'll see you soon. Take care and have a Trumptastic day. Trisha Cunningham works as an unpaid volunteer for the Trump campaign in a suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Since Trump announced his run, her life has revolved around him. This is Donald Trump reminding you to trust your instincts. They're there for a reason, so go with your gut. Even her ringtone is his voice, delivering motivational lines. Yep. Get in here to the office today and then we'll set you up with any, any questions that you have and tickets that you need. We'll go ahead and put them out for you right here. Sign his card anyhow. Right. He'll be representing him. So you're definitely going to be um, out there vote for him. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, no doubt about that. What's your number one issue when it comes to this election? So my number one issue for mm -hmm. my family, for my grandkids, my great grandkids, mm -hmm. is illegal immigration and the crisis that we're facing right now. Our borders are so soft. Uh, we have sanctuary cities where people can just run and nobody needs to know where they're at. They can save things and hide. I lived in South Carolina, I raised my children in Myrtle Beach. Um, very eclectic melting pot of all nationalities. They had to sit in class with illegal immigrants and children that could not speak English, and the teachers were forced to take them into the school. They were scared of any kind of retribution that was going to happen to them. When's his birthday? Polls have shown that people who express resentment toward immigrants and minorities are more likely to support Trump than other candidates. Ready? Three, two, one. Trump's visiting Pittsburgh for the second time in three months. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Trisha met him the last time he was here. And tomorrow, she'll be in the VIP section, where she'll see him again, up close. What she and other core Trump supporters do these next few months could help decide the election. For Trump to win, he'll have to capture a few crucial swing states. And this year, Pennsylvania is in play. Like West Virginia, it sits in America's Rust Belt, a region still reeling from declining industries, job losses, and economic insecurity. You know, I've been to several of Donald Trump's rallies. I've never, ever seen a dull moment, mm -hmm. ever. If not one second. He, he's a motivator, mm -hmm. you know, and if people, he, he really reacts to the crowd. And people, if you hear him say, build that wall, and you see your crowd explode, mm -hmm. that's hitting them somewhere. dramatic entrance in all fairness, right? Everything's political, correct. I mean, you watch what you say, you say something a little bit off, you end up with headlines. It's like a bunch of babies, like a bunch of dumb babies. And believe me, folks, the world is laughing at us. They can't believe what's happening. Countries all over the world taking advantage of us. Mexico, we have a trade deficit. $58 billion a year, and they're killing us on the border. 
China, think of it. China, oh, we'll build the wall. Don't worry about it. We'll build the wall. We'll build the wall. We'll build the wall. We'll build that wall. That's part of a, a classic response to hard times. This is right wing populism, which has existed in the world before. It's generally nationalistic and xenophobic in tone. You know, we are the chosen people. We are the exceptional people, Americans. And what are we doing? Being deluded by all these brown people or Asian people. You know, it's not my country. I've heard people that say that again and again. You get this weird mixture of things that are correct and true and liberal and even leftist with things that are vile and racist and, uh, you know, truly horrifying. And he just throws them all out there together. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. It's been a theme throughout Trump's campaign, from his promise to build a wall to his rhetoric on Muslims and refugees. You know how much money this is? We are 19 trillion going up to 21 trillion because of the omnibus budget, which was passed. Which, by the way, allows Syrian refugees in. We have no idea where they are, who they are, where they come from. Excuse me, folks. They're coming to Pittsburgh. You just don't know it, OK? They're coming to Pittsburgh. You don't know it. They're being put all over the country just like they want to be. And who Trump's knows? messaging is not Trojan lost on his base. We talk about Trojan horse. And maybe it's a Trojan horse. Many of them maybe echo what he says. Not. And some even take it a step further, claiming that President Obama is a secret Muslim. They got one of their own in our office. No matter what anyone thinks, everything that this administration here has done, this Obama administration, is to promote these Muslims in our country. I know he does not like Christians. They're murdering Christians by the thousands all over the world. All over the world. This, this country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. We were not founded on Sharia law. And no matter what the pundits said, and all of them were, were against Trump. Oh, he's done. His ceiling is here. His ceiling is here. And no matter what he said, he keeps moving up because he touched the souls of Americans. Regardless of how people put it, they, all, they consistently say that what they like about Trump is the way that he talks. And that is really interesting because, um, you know, Trump is different from your standard issue American politician in all kinds of ways. You know, what Mr. Trump is doing, he's old school. People are asking questions and he identifies it. And he says it the way that it is. He's doing what everybody else wants to do and say what they want. He has taken PC and exploded. It's like a bomb. It's gone. Political correctness is gone. Now, at first, that, that fascinated me. Politically correct? Why are we talking about that again? I thought that was, you know, over you know, that discussion. But then it occurred to me. What it means is that you can be free in expressing racism and misogyny and nationalist triumphalism, whatever. You can be just free to say it. You know, we put so much time and effort into helping the person that we feel that we can trust to make this better. And people don't even know who he is. They just listen to people screaming at him or calling him a racist or a bigot or a fascist. And we know better. We're not out there fighting for a man that was a celebrity. We're out there fighting for a man that's willing to take that leap of faith and fight for us. But all that money's going to go to Mr. Trump's campaign. Trisha Cunningham believes in Donald Trump. And that means she'll do anything to get him elected. Like the time she jumped out of an airplane for Trump and posted the video online. For her, the stakes in this election could not be higher. Can you imagine what happens to America if he doesn't win? If he doesn't, I want to jump out of a plane without a chute because I feel that's exactly what's going to happen to our country. We're all going to feel that. We won't have an America. We already don't. Perhaps more than any other feeling, the sense that America is slipping away is what's fueling Donald Trump's candidacy. It can be found in cities and towns across the country, in people who were left behind in the economic recovery. Those who say that the good, stable jobs their parents and grandparents relied on have all but disappeared.
Hi, Chris. Yep. Josh Rushman at Thought Lines. Glad to meet you. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, thank Go you ahead. for having us. Chris Setzer works at a United Technologies manufacturing plant in Huntington, Indiana. In February, he and his co-workers were told that their jobs were being moved to Mexico. They just work for years and build up your family and stuff. And all of a sudden, you're told that you got to look for another job. That's like starting all over again. That's just like going through a divorce and starting all over again. It became clear that the best way to stay competitive. The same announcement was made in Indianapolis at Carrier, a factory owned by United Technologies, and workers there recorded it. Wow. I want to be clear. This is strictly a business decision. Yeah. The video that results has become this sort of uh, YouTube classic, and everybody has seen it, and it's shocking, you know, it's horrifying. And, and they all find out that they've they just lost their jobs, they just lost everything. And then they, they, oh, the executive has the nerve to say, and you know, we have to keep up quality until the day we close down, and they're like, you, you know, <laughs> so pissed off about it. This has been happening in lots of different factories, but this is the one that rings true for people because of those images, because of the people yelling, because they look such, like such average people. It didn't take long for Donald Trump to rail against Carrier in speech after speech, and then threatened to reverse free trade deals like the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, deals that make such decisions possible. You love Indiana, right? The Hoosiers, the Hoosiers. In fact, opposition to free trade has become a central theme of his campaign. And you know, when Carrier that left here goes to Mexico and they want to sell their product, across the border and no tax, no nothing. We're gonna say, sorry folks, we have a nice strong border, we have a nice beautiful wall. You're gonna bring it across the border and we're gonna charge you a 35% tax after what you did. It's no good. Chris has worked at the factory for 13 years, longer than most of his children have been alive. We thought he was joking at first. He was like, so? I'm gonna have to look for a new job because I'm losing mine and we all thought that it was a joke that he was just like messing with us so we didn't believe him at first. Because you thought he'd have that job for... Yeah, he's for had that job ever since I can remember. So how do you guys feel about what's happening? It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair? It's n he, They worked there for so long. There's so many loyal people there and for them just to move because it's better for the business, not better for their workers. It shows that they really don't care very much about the people that work for them. Because that's something a lot of people that have families and children and stuff they have to feed out on the streets and they have to go find another job. What do you think Donald Trump means when he says he's going to make America great again? Probably just making it where people can work and live again without having to worry about, uh, am I going to have my job tomorrow? Or is it going to move again? Or is it going to go this way? We have the always, right now we have the what ifs. Go ahead, you can get him out, get him out. Right there, get him out. If 2008 was about hope and change, 2016 is about something much darker. So these thugs walk in and they go boom, 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 kill 130. Donald Trump won the Republican primaries by tapping into people's fears and anxieties, both real and imagined. Anything. You look at what happens with these countries that we take care of, it is absolutely horrible. He's based his campaign on bigotry toward immigrants and minorities. Our country doesn't win anymore. And talking about the economic struggles of an American middle class that feels like no one's listening to them. Here we go. Smaller, smaller, weaker, weaker. Everyone said at work says good. Finally, someone's speaking up for us. Because obviously the company doesn't care about us. The government doesn't care about us. What they just did was give fuel to Donald Trump. Like pouring gasoline on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, we will make America great again. We will make America great again. We will make America rich again. We will make America safe again. We will make America... <laughs>